Hey everybody. Um, in today's sessions, um, I want to cover two things with you. One is um, a few videos on what I call basic principles for science or scientific writing. Um, we're actually going to review. I'm going to review three of them with you, and then I also will um, take a look at uh, with you some blog writing and actually applying those principles in writing blogs. So I'm trying to get my screen here to cooperate. I think there we go. This looks better. So again, two parts: basic principles, which are three um, that I will cover, which of, the, of which there are three I will cover, and then um, a short little video on blog writing with some examples, and then a little activity for you guys to actually practice that on writing a blog for the Meridian Network. Okay. So let's get started. Um, just as a reminder, there's two types um, that I mentioned before of sort of writing that scientists tend to do. There's the quote-unquote scientific writing that is traditionally published in academic journals for predominantly academic audiences. And then, of course, writing published for more general audiences, for a general audience like newspapers, blogs, books, etc., which is mostly referred to as science writing, although people switch back and forth between those terms. Now, the principles I'm going to go over with today really benefit both science and scientific writing, particularly the scientific writing. I wish more academics would write with these principles in mind when they write their articles and make for much easier reading. So the three ones that I'm covering today, and there's plenty of them, I teach a course usually with about seven that I cover, but there are many, many more. But the three that I'm going to use today, and I think those are the most powerful ones, are number one, using strong verbs and eliminate nominalization, and then explain what nominalization means to you when we get there in a few minutes. Number two, structure sentences to enhance reader's experience. This has a lot to do with sentence length. <laughs> and we'll look at that, and you'll have some fun activities to do on that. And then the third one, use active voice as much as possible. And I've mentioned this throughout our videos on the in-read article. So let's, let's take a look at this first principles. Using strong verbs and eliminating nominalization. That's a tough word to pronounce, and I'll explain to you in a second what that means. But I want to show you an example first from a... Uh, it's from a video from a uh, editor, a science and um, he's, he works for a scientific companies and for companies in general in the San Francisco Bay Area on the west coast of the United States. And um, this company, Compugen, has approached this guy, Mike Ponsol. I put the link in here to his website. He has a great blog on writing clearly that is really wonderful. But Compugen approached him um, about doing some work for him, for them. On their website, and they wanted to introduce, they wanted to include, among many other things, the mission statement for their company um, on their website. So here is the mission statement that they had. And mind you, this is a website for the public, right? Not just for experts. Compugen is a leading therapeutic product discovery company focused on therapeutic proteins and monoclonal antibodies to address important unmet needs in the fields of immunology and oncology, either for Compugen or its partners. That is a mouthful, and I, it was actually even tough for me to read through it without having to take at least one breath. So my console focused really on using active verbs, describing what Compugen actually does, rather than what it is. And this is what he came up with, and it's shorter, which is always nice, and much more to the point. Compugen makes therapeutic products that boost the human immune system and fight cancer. Right? So if you go back to the original, all that fields of immunology and oncology and therapeutic proteins and monoclonal antibodies. Okay, I mean, I really don't care as a public person what that all is because I don't understand what it means. So if you use this language, it has to be explained first. So his version that really focuses on, it makes these type of products that do this, boost and fight. Beautifully done, a whole lot shorter. Um, so keep this in mind. This is what we're, what I'm talking about when I mean strong verbs. So nominalizations um, are basically when people take verbs like conclude, analyze, explain, assess. They add some sort of ending to it, either ION, IS, and so on, and they make no nouns out of them. Conclusion, analysis, explanation, assessment. Those are fine words, but when they're used to describe an action, the action hides in the noun. The noun is not a verb. A verb expresses something that something or somebody has done or is doing, rather than the actual noun version of it. So let me show you some examples of that. So here, is, here are some four really good examples. Often people say to give a report. 
Well, just use report, because that's the verb, or make a decision. Decide, offer a suggestion, suggest, issue an announcement. This is one of my favorites. Well, you're announcing something. None of these express I mean, expressions are all fine, they're grammatically correct, but they're also a little bit more what we call verbose, which is something I'm accused of recently, uh, or frequently. <laughs> Somebody who talks a lot and uses a lot of big words, right? Or verbose, I mean, it doesn't have to be a negative um, term. It can be somebody who really uses a lot of words to express themselves. Um, but when it comes to clear scientific communication, being less verbose is a really good idea. So these are all phrases. So report, give a report. Report here is the noun. Decision is the noun rather than the verb decide. Suggestion is the noun rather than the verb suggest. Announcement is the noun rather than the verb announce. Two more examples that are a little more sophisticated. I conduct a careful examination of. There is a really great verb called scrutinize or cause a drop in the morale of. Demoralize. Now these are a little bit harder to figure out because you can't just use the noun that's hiding in here and make the verb out of it. But these are other examples where there are verbs that express the same idea that we have to use five, six, seven words. It's actually one verb, one verb for it. Just to give you a hint. And here's the website. They have some um, other really nice um, examples of well as well if you want to check it out. I'll put all of those links, by the way, in the link folder on Moodle as well as well as in the PowerPoint here, so you have to have several ways of accessing it once I upload the PowerPoint. So the tip is, my tip is when you're looking for cases of nominalizations, which scientists are famous for, you want to look for off. So here, for example, is a sentence, MSGs offer considerable potential for the discovery of mechanisms, and so on and so on, and prognostic diagnostic markers for the management of. Here are our culprits. So here's a revision for this. MSGs offer considerable potential to discover mechanisms and so on to manage, rather than earlier the discovery of, the management of. Right? So you're saving a few words, which is all, an added benefit of often taken out nominalizations. Not always, but in many cases. Right? So rather than the action and the hiding behind the noun, discovery of, management of, you actually have to make it discover and manage. Sometimes when you do that or when you find a nominalization you're writing, you might have to rewrite the whole sentence, but often it's just really exchanging the noun for the verb, and it's really simple. Here's another um, good example. A robust service center for clinicians is critical for successful adoption of epic systems and continuity of patient care. It also provides an opportunity for the de for development of super use in various roles. There's a few ofs in there, you probably have noticed them already. Successful adoption of, continuity of, development of. So let's make this adopt, continue, develop. Et voila. A robust service center for clinicians is critical to successfully adopt and continue and to develop. Right? So really clear verbs. And as a reader, uh, readers, and, um, and talking from my perspective, Readers respond really well when we know who is doing what. And there's a great example from uh, a wonderful um, uh, American essay writer who's also written this little book called uh, um, Elements of Style. And I'll post a link to that in the, um, uh, in the link section as well. Um, E.B. White and the other author, first name I don't remember, his last name is Strunk. And so they have this example in there, something like, there is a kicking action taking place between Tom and Paul. Well, it's really Tom kicks Paul. Very short. Tom is doing something to Paul, rather than there is a kicking action taking place. So that's a very exaggerated example. But that's the principle behind um, taking out nominalizations. They make sentences more active. Um, we will talk about active and passive voice in our, uh, as our third principle as well. But here is already a way you can make your writing more active with even, without even touching active or passive voice. So, I have some practice for you. So I want you to go to handout 9 in the handout folder in the Moodle course. And there are six sentences. And I want you to revise each of those with this principle in mind. So look for the offs. Sometimes you can find the nominalizations that way. Sometimes you can't. But in most cases, you'll find offs. Take out the nominalizations and make active verbs out of those nominalized, nominalized nominalized verbs in the first place. So um, there's six examples. 
and edit you know as much as you like but really uh, pay attention to those sentences in the light of this principle and when you've done that um, there is a video the next video I'll walk you through um, all of those examples